Okay, so I've been making this axe model and I think it's about time for UV unwrapping. So I put a blin on it just to have a quick once over before I get going with this. I'm just gonna change my background. I think I messed around with the, the plane. I did have some reference in there. Let's just double check if it's there. Is it this one? Nope. Oh, it's on my display layer. Okay, so if you didn't see the video before with the modeling, uh, I just modeled this axe. So the reference was that. So that's what we're going for. And I just put a blin onto it so I can see the highlights. And I'll just see if there's any particularly strange areas. You know, sort of weird lumps and stuff. But I think. That's pretty much good. The only issue I do have is, you see when I smooth, so when you're UV unwrapping something, when you go between one and three, if I highlight this edge, I can see how much that's stretching. I'll just go to edge mode, double click. Oh, actually, it's good that I just checked because it's not selecting that whole line, which means Yep, that's separated. So in order to combine these two pieces, I actually I started off with a quarter and then I duplicated across using the mirror and then did the same for the other end. So it's probably worth double clicking the edges. Okay, so that for all these, for, is it all of them? Oh my gosh, okay. Right. Okay, I'm just going to go to object mode and then isolate the selection. So I guess if I go to edge on this, double click the edge. Okay, none of this edge, none of this area is um, it's merged. So I'm going to go to vertex mode quickly and select all of it. Oh, schoolboy error and then hold down shift right click merge vertices I'm gonna get the option box open because I'm gonna try mass merge these verts just to save time but if it's too high it's going to start combining other verts together so let's see if that worked so I'll select that one move it around cool I'll just select that one brilliant now I'm just going to check this original edge, double click, okay, it selects the whole thing. Good times. So anyway, if I with that edge selected, if I smooth, it shifts all the way down there. And for my render, I will probably end up smoothing this. So, you know, if you, it's not such a worry if you're not smoothing things, if you're making assets for video games or games engines I should say then you might be able to get away with it but that object if I do want to smooth it this is just an asset um, so just in case I smooth it um, I might have to do a mesh smooth or add in another edge loop so if I just drop one in because you see there's this massive gap with no edge loops down the middle so I could just pop in some more and then I'll smooth it again so you can see the result and if I hit three so we're still getting one of the lines moving further down so there would just need to be an, a few more edge loops popped in so when my is smoothing it there's more essentially like more resistance with the smooth so if I dropped in a bunch more, let's go crazy, 16, hit 3, we don't have any stretching of the edge loops. Well, any that we do is so minute. But what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> I'm going to go back so I'm going to remove these, remove the last edge loops. I'm going to UV unwrap this when it's lower poly and then if I want to cut into it, 
then I can do that once it's unwrapped. So let's open the UV editor and you can see from the get-go this is a bit of a mess. So there are different ways in which you can set up a basic UV unwrap. So what we have on the left hand side this is the obviously the 3D version but then in order to put images onto 3D objects or textures then you need to flatten an, a 2D version so the UVs of the objects so Maya knows where to project this image onto. You can use this checker here to look at the distribution of the texture so what that would mean is you see these squares we've now got up here so they should be evenly distributed with the model but looking at this handle you can see it's just a complete mess so on the top it's kind of okay but when we look at this area it's gone just berserk so we need to do some UV unwrapping so to start with there are a few options if I hold down space go to UV we do automatic this will just try and work out the best projection for each side and give you approximately six to ten pieces so if I did that now then we can already see the distribution of the of the mm -hmm. checkers has already improved tenfold it would still need some work so this is what it's come up with. If I go to object mode, select that, I'm going to turn off the checker and you'll notice these white lines. So these white lines, the seams, so that means if we get a picture from Google, whenever it hits that line, that means where there's an edge in this UV area. So if I select that line, there, so if it's this end and we stick a picture of a face from Google there, if the picture overlaps to up to this area, then it's not going to be shown. So you need to minimize the amount of seams because you will always have some seams, but what you want to do is try and hide them. But I can see I've got these white lines on the edges, so I'd want to combine them. There are different presets for the UV unwrapping. In this instance, I would actually start with this, like that's a pretty good result. Um, but there are a few others you can take a look at. So if I hold shift, right click, sorry, not shift, right click, spacebar, UV. So we have a few more down here. We have best plane, and Maya will just pick whatever particular axis it thinks is correct for this object. Then you've got camera based, a similar, but it will project from your, from where your camera is. So an instance where that could be good is if you've got, let's say, I don't know, an actor and you want to do some sort of texture projecting onto them and you've got a, I don't know, a rough, 3D object for their head and then it's tracked to the actor's face then you could line up a camera to be where your virtual camera is and then project essentially through that onto the actor so that's a bit more complicated but that is when I've used that before that's the actually that might be the only time I've used camera based projection um, some of these other ones I've never used over the years, but cylindrical, planar, spherical. So this will try and unwrap the object based on those primitive shapes. So this is kind of cylindrical, although it's hard edged. So this should give a okay start point. Let's click apply. I take that back. Look at that. So it's just made some of these faces massive. I'm not even sure where they are. If I press 4 on my keypad, 
Where's that? Oh, okay, that's the underside. The other side, other side, okay. And then the rest of the geometry is going to be here, I guess. It's just completely squished a lot of it. Okay. So in this instance, that's not worked out. And then I'll quickly demonstrate the planar. So UV, planar. So this will project directly from a particular axis. So this can be useful. So if I picked Y, what it will do is essentially flatten this from the Y axis, so from above. So we'll probably get a good look for one side, but then I estimate that my UVs will be red because they'll be overlapping. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on here is we've told Maya to flatten it from the top and because it's got geometry underneath, which I'm going to just hide this, this plane, this reference plane. So the underneath is red because it's being squashed by, well, it's not being squashed, it's more because of the overlapping. So wherever it's red, it's just overlapped UVs. So this could be an okay start point if I put on the checkers. They're just a bit stretched, but we could use that as a start point as well. And you'll see if I press X and do apply, it's going to squish it sideways. So if you see in the bottom left hand corner, we have the axis and the X is in relation to this object, it's my left and right. So it's going to completely destroy this, but we'll probably get blue on one side and then red on the other, other side. So let's click apply. I'm just going to go back to object mode, click apply. So yeah, red on one side, blue on the other, and a bit more red at the bottom. And in my UV editor, it's completely destroyed. So I would imagine if I pick the Z axis, that would be even, even worse. So the same principle applies for the spherical, but yeah, that would only be good if you need to UV unwrap a sphere. So in this instance, in fact, in most inst instances, I just use automatic and you can change some of the options. So it'll try and create six planes. It won't always do that. So I just leave the default like that. Hit apply. Let's turn on the checkers. So this will also illustrate stretching and stuff like that. And when I smooth this, you can see how the texture can be affected in specific areas. Let's take a look at this end. Actually, we're not, we're not seeing that much. We're seeing a bit there. I would imagine it to be more. What, I would, what I've done in the past is before we had this option, I would just create a surface shader. So right click on the object and assign favorite. And just pick a surface shader and then in Maya, you have checkers inbuilt. So there's a checker pattern there. So you can apply that. And then in the place 2D texture area, then you can up the amount of repetitions of the textures. If I put that 20, 20, take a look, and then hit three. Okay. But we don't really have to do that nowadays. So let's pop uh, pop the blim back on there. Okay, so let's let's get some stitching done. I'm gonna turn off the checkers for the moment. So I want the seams, I can see we've got seams on the sides along the edge, and I'd rather keep them at the bottom so the bottom's fine. And if I I will probably have to have one on the side, but at the moment I've got two. So 
So I could select in the 3D view the edges I want, or I could do it in this editor. So I'm just going to double tap. Actually, let's full screen this. So I just want the sides selected. So I've double clicked this edge. I'm going to hold control and drag to remove any edges I do not want. So if we select all the edges at once, then it's just going to try and merge everything together in 2D and we'll end up with what we had at the beginning, which was pretty much a disaster. So you just want to do it one sort of long edge at a time. Okay, and it will highlight the corresponding edge. So this edge I selected here corresponds to this edge here. So then what I can do, there are some hotkeys, but I'll show you in the menu. So when we go to cut and sew, so this is how you cut an edge and then you sew or stitch together. So I'm going to stitch together and it's just connected those two edges together. So I can go back to UV, that's right click UV, double click on that. And I'm just going to take a look with the checkers on. So they still don't look that even, like these squares there look like they're stretching along. So then what I can do once I've stitched an area together, then I can go to unfold and I'm going to turn off the checkers and hit unfold and it will basically relax this area. So when I put the checkers back on, they're not as stretched on that area. And then I also use optimize. So I'll just hit that a few times to see if it's actually doing anything. Again, these two kind of work in relation with each other. So you unfold and then optimize the layout of it. There are some other similar options you can do, such as straighten shell, straighten UVs. But I'll just check out the checkers first because they look okay to me on that on this bit that I've got selected. I can change the selection whilst my UVs are selected in the UV editor, I can go to my 3D mode, hold shift, right click. Is it shift? Damn hotkeys. Let's select the UVs again. Oh, okay, sorry, it's control. I'm a fan of using the hotkeys, but there are so many hidden menus. So hold control right click to faces to faces so now I know that this chunk here is all of this chunk of my 3D model the UVs look pretty good so I'm going to go back to UV mode and just to illustrate another function you can do I'm going to press straighten shell so this will just line up a bit straight so it only moved a fraction but you can also do straighten UVs and this will try and straighten these lines. Now we have some overlapping option, um, some overlapping faces in our 2D view. So let's go to checkers. In this instance, it's worsened the result. So I can click, let's unfold it again and optimize and then straighten shell. So now we're pretty much back to what we had. That's good. So I'm just gonna go to face mode and double click this area just to check that it is the entire bottom. That's fine to me. I'm just gonna smooth it. So we are getting some stretching on the edge. So that's only a concern if I am smoothing, as I said earlier, but for the moment, I'm going to leave it because what I could do is just pop in some extra edge loops along here to try and minimize that stretching.
or I could just um, mesh smooth the whole object. But as I was cutting in lines there, it was fixing the distortion, but not particularly affecting the UVs. So that's why I would recommend UVing when it's slightly lower poly, just to give yourself a starting ground rather than making something that's millions of polygons. As you can see, my axe head is pretty terrible looking. So I'm going to UV unwrap this, but use the automatic. So hold spacebar, go to UV, just hit automatic. That's pretty damn good. So it's pretty much picked up one side. So we've got the top. And then the bottom. Great. Okay, now we have all these random little bits. So what are they? So we've got the sides. So I suppose the question is what what sides should I connect to which bits? And there's no specific right or wrong with that. So if I select this area, so all I want to do is minimize the amount of seams. So I could leave this, I could leave this and texture it, but I will have seams on these bits. So if this is my front, then I would probably want the seams to be just underneath here. So I'm going to go to edge mode and select this edge along here. But I only want to fix one bit at a time, so I'm just going to control select this other area. And I see some orangey highlighted bits, so I'm going to just control drag. I'm not sure what they're a part of. And then I'm going to hold shift. This is a quick menu way. Hold shift, right click, stitch together. So now it's brought it over there. But it's slightly destroyed. The UV area. So now I just need to do the unfold. So I think there's a quick menu for that, isn't there? No. Okay. So unfold. Now it's changed the look of it quite a bit. Now the shape of this is getting a bit weird. But I know I'm going to texture paint this in Substance Painter, which is a 3D painter. So if I was texturing it in Photoshop, I would have kept it to the way it was before because it was clearer to see. So that's more obvious of where you're painting. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to texture in Photoshop compared to Substance or Mari. So I'm just going to double check what what the what side this is on okay so that's there cool let's uh, unfold optimize gonna just keep tapping that okay so the question is are these even and are they stretching Maybe slightly. Okay, I think we can get away with that. Now if I go to face mode, just to double check. Okay, so this is one whole bit. So it'd probably be good to attach whatever edge this is. Along there, so I'm gonna, so I've selected that edge in 3D and it looks like it's all broken up over here. So I'm going to hold down shift, right click, stitch together. And now we have these random bits sticking out. So it's not all these edges are attached because there were so many broken up parts. So before I start stitching the edges together, I'm going to select all the UVs and unfold again. Optimize. 
and now I'm going to go to edge mode and as you'll see as I hover over these it shows the corresponding edge that needs to be connected so I can just select this, this and all these corresponding edges to stitch together so this edge So shift, right click, stitch together. I can pretty much just select that whole area there. And even though I've selected all these edges, I'm stitching things together. So these are st already stitched together. So even though I've just selected all that area, I know they're already connected. So when I go shift, right click, stitch together, it won't affect them. But now we have this distorted mess here. So what you could do, I guess, is go to UV mode and just start to place these out. But, you know, it's kind of a waste of time when you've got the unfold and optimize tools. So let's unfold and look how neat that is. Optimize. Gonna go back to edge mode, holding down right click. Just select a bunch of these edges. So I'm shift dragging over. Okay, I think that's fine. So shift, right click, stitch together. And just out of habit, whenever I've done a connection, a stitch together, then I always select the whole thing and unfold, optimize. Great. Let's just look at the object in 3D. So I'm going to go to face mode, double select this bit, because this is becoming our pretty much like masterpiece. Okay, so I've got this whole area here, which I'd like to connect. I do have some weird edge loops going on, just based on the reference that was these, uh, these harsher bits coming out. So I can see this whole area there will connect to this area. So shift, right click and stitch. And I'm just gonna relax this again in the UV mode. So unfold, optimize. Something interesting going on down there. So going to edge mode just to fix up these bits. I think I can get away with selecting all of that and holding shift, right click, stitch together. If anything goes wrong when doing that, then you can always just control Z. Okay, I think I've got some edges here. There might not be edges connected over here, so I'm just gonna select that whole area. And so when doing that, you've gotta be careful of other, other things that are meant to be connected because not everything needs to be connected but looking at this area down here I can see there are certainly some edges that need to be stitched but I don't want to connect them to this other bigger bit so what I can do is select that entire area control drag and hold shift right click let's go to stitch and now I know it has stitched together the anomalies that we had over here. So I just need to unfold that again. Oh, it is there. Shift. Okay. Cool. Shift. Uh, right click. Look how good that looks now. So there we go. Um, there's some random ones up here. It's polygons. So in edge mode, come on, select. It's not selecting anything. It's good. Not sure why it's not selecting those. Do they even exist? That is the question.
So this final bit here, because I don't know what's going on with them at the moment. So I'm just going to highlight all of that and see if I can see the corresponding edge, which there's one there. But just in case it has more than one corresponding edge, so it could have another corresponding edge over here. So I just want it stitched to this piece. And looking carefully, I can actually see that it wants to also stitch there. So I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to control, drag. So hopefully it will just ping to this side when I stitch. And it has done. So that's good. Okay, just to make sure all of these edges are stitched together, I'm going to select all of this and then deselect holding control all of this area and stitch just in case there were any areas which were not stitched together. I'm going to do the same with the other side. And I don't know what's up with that. That hasn't actually happened before. So it's nice that it decided to happen during this video. So let's go to layout. So we can actually lay these out better once we've, we're now happy with these pieces. Because as you can see, they are coming outside of this box. So this is our UV box from zero to one. So this is actually a UDIM. And so the use of UDIMs is we can actually UV things. So this entire axe, I can put the head of the axe just into this UV space here, zero to one. And then I could put the other bits like the handle and the very top bit into these other spaces. And what that will do is it will separate them for texturing. So they will each have their own separate texture input. So when I take this into Substance Painter, then I would be able to maximize the texture resolution for this head. Because this area here, 0 to 1, this will just be one single texture. So I could make this, you know, 4K resolution, so 4096 pixels by 4096. So I could set that area to be 4K, so that's quite high res, and it will just affect this object, which is my axe head. And then for the very top bit of my axe, this bit here, what I could do is when I unwrap it, I could shift it along to be in a different UDIM, so 1 to 2. And because it's smaller, I might decide, oh, I don't want to give it a 4K texture. So I could just give it a 512 by 512 pixel texture. So then we're giving my texture information in places that matter more to us, because this is a bigger op object I want to give it more texture resolution whereas this is quite small so I might want to do that you now all the other thing you could do is once you've unwrapped all these objects then you can just stick them in in this zero to one box but you have to keep in mind that they will be sharing that resolution so the smaller these UVs in this box area, the less resolution they will have. Because if we think about it, if this is a 4K box, then a quarter of it will be 1K, so 1, 000, just over 1,000 pixels to each, each area. So if I didn't change the size of these and I just laid them out, so if I select them, and I go to, where is it, Arrange and Layout tab, and then I just hit Layout. 
and let's orient so this will change their angle. Um, let's do, or is it gather shells? No. Should be orient shells to make them straighter. Okay, let's just lay out. Okay, so it's it's made them bigger now, but if you think about it, if this is one 4096 pixel image, then this, this part of my model that I've just highlighted now is getting 1000 pixels of information. And this whole area down here that's also getting 1000 pixels. But if you can see that area that I've just highlighted, most of the model's not even in there. So all this area here, which is empty, that's gonna be, there's gonna be more texture information there not even being used. So ideally, you want these to fill up as much space as possible. But obviously you can't just completely do that and be like, yep, yeah, my texture's done, let's make it you know, 10,000 pixel resolution texture. So you just got to be careful how you do that. So you could unwrap all these pieces and then put them into one UDIM slot. So this first one, and then decide that you want a really high res texture. But the problem is if you've got this single texture, that's really high res, let's say, in Mari, you can export a 32K texture, but there is a higher chance that it will take a long time for Maya to process it and then render it. So the only time I've ever done that in the past, it's actually crashed. So it's, it's more efficient to separate things, uh, separate objects into separate UDIMs. So when I turn on this file here, it's displaying this texture that's built into Maya. So you can actually see here, it tells us, so this number 1001, so that is the UDIM tile number. So we've got 1001, 1002. So when you load in a texture and you've got multiple UDIMs, you can essentially load in an image sequence, kind of like um, you know, a movie file, and that's a very simple way of putting it, but it is just an image sequence. So whatever ends with the number 1001, Maya will pick it up and just pop it in there, and then that continues, so on and so forth. And if we zoom out, we've got a lot of slots, so you can keep on going, you can go from one to 10, I think it's 10, no, it's, uh, yeah. And yeah, continue going up there. I think the, some of the texturing packages like Mari and Substance do have a limit, probably of 99. But the largest UDIM sequence that I, I had to texture in the past was 64 of these tiles and that was in Substance Painter I believe. Anyway, let's quickly unwrap this one. So I'm going to hold down spacebar, go to automatic. So it brings it to the first tile, so that's the default area that it will snap things to. That's a pretty good start point. Going back to object mode. And let's see if we can get rid of these seams at the sides. I'm just going to turn off the checkers. So I'm not so bothered about the seams at the edge. So I'd rather just remove one of the side seams if I can. So I'm just going to brute force select a whole side there and hold shit away. Oh yeah, there's no bottom to this area. So the fact that I've got edges at the bottom 
highlighted, it doesn't actually matter because there are no polygon faces there. So let's shift, right click, stitch together. Cool, that looks terrible. So let's go to UVs, so right click, UVs. I'm double clicking, I want to unfold that. And optimize, let's check on the checkers. Cool, they're pretty even. We have that one seam across there. So now we don't have a seam on this side, so that's good. So we're just reducing the amount of seams. And there's a complete mess down here on the bottom. So I'm gonna brute force it again, go to edge, select all that area, deselect that side because I know I can actually hover over these and just see if they're going to connect up with each other. So when I do that, the reason I deselected that area was because I know that if I have that selected, it's going to try and snap over there. So this whole bit here is just going to implode. So now I'll just stitch, right, uh, so shift, right click, stitch. So it's already kind of imploded, but not too bad. I know if I unfold this, this should still be okay. Now, what I might have to do is actually add in my own slight cut, because let's take a look. So checkers, yeah, we're getting some proper stretching. Now, these sides, this main edge here, that connecting to this side and that side, that's fine. This is being caused by this area here, because if we look in this 2D view, everything is going towards this end section. So to relieve some of this tension off, I'm just going to essentially cut this open and then unfold it again. So these should straighten out a bit more. But the moment they're all dragging to this area, they're all being pulled there. So I'm going to select some edges down the line. Actually, I'm just going to double click that edge and control drag remove a bunch of them for the selection so I'm going to see if this fixes the issue that I had without having to cut this entire piece in half so I'm going to hold shift right click and cut now that that's cut can actually see now we have the seam line so this white line and now I'm gonna unfold when I select it so unfold and optimize tap that a few times let's put on the checkers again and awesome so now we just have the seam around here and this is all looking pretty symmetrical Awesome, great. So I'm gonna turn off the checkers and I'm gonna hit layout, wherever it is. So arrange and layout, down here, and layout. Just so I know it's between the zero and one. So it's doing that. But because I know my ax head is there, then they're going to be overlapping. So if I wanted these both in the 0 to 1 area, I could select both of them and then hit layout. And then it will lay them out in relation to the size of their three of the actual 3D objects. So that's the pretty useful part about it. So if I wanted to well actually if I if I wanted to have set separate textures for them. So what we've got now is these are scaled in relation to each other in the 3D world. So obviously this end bit is smaller than that. And that's great. 
that if we wanted to really optimize this texturing, then I can put this over here. And then I could scale this even bigger and put it there. But then the texture resolution I could have for this area could be, you know, really low res. So like 512 pixels by 512. And so by moving this bit to this own area, I could save, I could potentially save space for this at this particular piece. So that would be a reasoning for separating this bit here. If I was able to separate this in and take up more of this UV space, then I would definitely consider that and then shift this to the side. In this instance, we can leave these two things together because they're both going to have the same, same sort of shade on. And also, I don't want to add any more seams to this axe because we can see the seams are pretty much on this bottom edge and on the blade edge as well. So I'm going to select both these pieces and lay out. Cool. So now we have this stick, so this wooden stick handle, I mean. So I'm just going to lay this out, do layout, good. And then I've got all these, I think they're meant to be nails, I can't remember. So whatever these are. So let's see if I can just UV them on mass. So shift, sorry, it's space bar, space bar UV. And I'm contemplating which one. I can't do planar because they're slightly angled. You see I've actually positioned them in particular directions. So I feel if I do cylindrical, it's going to go crazy. So let's apply. Yep, what the utter flip is that? Jesus, okay, that's terrible. Right, let's do automatic, so shift. Keep getting my hotkeys confused. Bad times, right, automatic, planes, six, so hit apply. And now this deeper blue color just means when there are faces overlaying. So that's fine, but you know, you're gonna have the same texture there. So if I put a picture of a face for this bit over here, then whatever these faces are that are on top of each other, they're all gonna have the same thing. So that's a way of optimizing in terms of saving space but I don't need to do that for, for my model. So I'm just gonna hit layout. And yeah, actually let's just select all of that and all the metal bits I'm just gonna lay out together. And damn, it's made them tiny. So I'm gonna hit layout again, just with these areas selected. So now I need to just select a lot of these edges and just stitch them together. So I don't think these nails had some bottoms to them, so I can kind of recklessly do this. And what I mean by that is just on mass, just keep clicking, clicking all these edges. 2000 years later. So I've begun laying them out just in a, a pretty reckless way, which I was fine about. So I'm going to just select the UVs of all of these. So I haven't finished stitching together, but I'm just going to 
unfold just because I'm getting these weird as hell straight edges. So then optimize. Great, great. I'm going to hit layout again and it'll just separate them. Starting to look like some sort of kaleidoscope or something. So I wonder, I wonder if I could just select a whole bunch and then just shift, right click, stitch. See, sometimes you can just get away with just going crazy and selecting just a whole bunch of edges. Because I know that these circles, that is the very end of them. There is no, the, the nails that I modeled have no bottom to them. So I know they should look like cylinder type shapes, sorry, circles. Stitch. Got some extra red going on over here. So sometimes when when something's looking completely messed up, it's always worth going back to your actual geometry and seeing what's up with that. So I've just actually found that there was a cylinder in my scene that is completely unrelated. So it's good that I double checked. I'm going to try and do some really reckless stitching. I'm just going to select all of this and shift right click stitch. That worked better than I thought, even though I've got these weird results over there. So I'm going to go to the UV mode, select all of that and unfold. Come on, optimize. And where's the layout? Great, great. Okay, now back to checkers. And it's looking good. Looking good. So for this model, I'm then going to select all the things that I want to be on the same texture area or the same shader. So if I have two shaders, then what I could do is I could put all the metal objects onto one UDIM area. So let's say I'm going to do that. So I'll select all the metal bits, layout. Has it just scaled them tiny? It has. It's not laid them out very good. So let's do gather. Now where is the option box? So there are a few things you can change when laying out. So if I go to layout in the modify menu, there is an object. Um, sorry, a toolbox. So it'll give you a number of settings here, such as the so the packing resolution. So that's based on the texture resolution you think you might be using, and so these have to be in multiples of two for the best optimization. So, for example, from two five six. You will go to 512, so 512 pixels is pretty small. 
And then from there you would go 1024, that's, that's a quarter 1k texture. From there you would go to 2k, 2048, and then there's 4k, so double that. And then from there, then it's, I think it's 8128, I think. I don't know, maths, maths is hard. And then after that, 16k, 32k. I don't think you can go higher than 32k without killing your machine. So texture map size, it's got 4k there. I think 4k is the limit up there as well. Okay. Scale mode. I think this is what we need to change because it's giving us these really tiny nails. So some of this might have to be done manually. So let's just see what happens. Hmm. Okay, that's pretty terrible. Then this instance, I'm going to just select these two and then lay out. Okay, didn't change anything. I'm going to select all my nails. checking if I've selected all of them and I'm going to lay them out and then I'm going to select them I just shift them out of the way for the moment I'm going to go back to my other metal objects and now I'm going to highlight my nails as well and just scale them and bring them in to this area. So you could manually do this sort of thing, I guess. But we still have a lot of empty space there. So we'd probably want to fill that. So optimize the scale of them. You could cut the pieces up more and you know distribute them. But you will have more seams. So it depends if you care about the seams. If you're painting in a 3D package, then unless you're doing it procedurally, you can paint over the seams, so you can pretty much hide them. So if this was just for a video game, this asset, then I would probably just select all of this and just hit layout. Just so it's all on one area. And then I will just have to put in, um, you know, specular maps and things like that just to get the, you know, to, to show that this is the metal bit and then we have the wood bit here. So there'll be a bit of specular on there, but predominantly that area. So once you've done that, I would just advise to delete history from your object. Because let's just check on the right hand side for our history input. Yeah, we're getting all these inputs where we were cutting and sewing things. So it's just good practice to just remove the history. So holding down space bar, I've gone to edit, delete all by type, history. And so the end result, just to double check with the checkers. That is our UV X.